Good evening and welcome to the Center for Rural Development. My name is Lonnie Lawson. I'm the President and CEO here at the Center. Parents, I want to welcome you. We've had an incredible, incredible week with this group. Thank you for sharing your sons and daughters with us this week. Um, it's a great group. We, uh, we had a really good group first uh, class, and I'm always concerned if we have a really good group the first week that the second week might be just terrible, but you guys weren't terrible, were you? No, there you go. You can speak up. Say it again. No, it has been a, a really good week, and this is a great group of scholars. Again, uh, we held the, the camp on the campus of Lindsay Wilson College, and quite honestly, without their support and without their facilities, the program would not be nearly as strong as it is because having all of those... Congratulations uh, on your grad... <laughs> Hello? There, I hear voices. Having all of those facilities in the dining hall is just absolutely incredible. It makes the week a, a lot easier for us. Scholars, it's been a pleasure getting to know you this week. I've really enjoyed our time together. The, the majors were, I thought, very, very good. I think you've learned a lot. I think you've pushed yourself beyond uh, where you, you thought you might. But I think it's just been a really good week. Had some great speakers. Dr. Bill Lucky, president of Lindsey Wilson College. Had Dr. Michael Carter, president of Campbellsville University. Matt Daly from the Secretary of State's office. And today you heard from Kenny Davis. How many of you liked Kenny Davis? Incredible, incredible story. And uh, parents, I'm sorry that you didn't get to experience that, but it's just an amazing story. But your students, I'm sure, will tell you about that. We had the NASA video conference. I always enjoy those. And NASA does a fabulous job with their Speakers Bureau in reaching out to schools and to programs like this through the summer. So I would really do appreciate those. Scholars, you are part of an elite group now. You are graduates of the Rogers Scholars Program. And with that comes a lot of responsibilities. I've told you that on Sunday, and uh, I've told you that throughout the week, but it, it becomes a lot of responsibilities. You elected from your group two ambassadors to represent you, but honestly, we look at all of you as ambassadors of the Rogers Scholars Program. You represent Congressman Rogers, you represent the Center for Rural Development and our board of directors and staff, and you represent the Rogers Scholars Program. So we know that you're going to do a great job of going out there and representing this program and telling everyone uh, of the great things that you had this week. Congressman Rogers was not able to be here this week, uh, but he has sent a video message that we'll hear in just a minute. But he was asked, I was in a, an event with him about a year ago, and he was asked, what was the greatest accomplishment in his professional career. And you know what he said? You guys, this Rogers Scholars Program, that's the thing that he is most proud of. And I think that is absolutely amazing that of all of the things that he's done on a local scale, on a national scale, the thing that he is most proud of is the Rogers Scholars Program. So again, the bar is set very, very high. The expectations are very strong for you. One of my mentors once told me the true measure of a person is how they respond when they get knocked down. And believe me when I tell you, you will get knocked down, but you cannot stay down. You must get up, you must keep fighting, you must keep going on. Your only limitation is really what's, what's between these ears, your imagination. You can do anything that you dream of, and I know that you guys are gonna go out and do some great things because I saw your creativity this week, I saw your great ideas this week, I mean, I'll be honest with you, some of the ideas that you came up in the engineering major, you could go out and get a patent on those. So don't let yourself be stifled by stereotypes, by your own uh, fears. A lot of times we are guided by our fears much more than we are our dreams, and uh, I think that's a challenge. None of us should be living out our fears. We should be living out our dreams and doing great things. 25 years from now, I think you'll be a whole lot more disappointed by the things that you did not do rather than the things that you did do. So explore, dream, get out there, do, do great things, take a trip, do an international trip, see what the rest of the world is like. You're not competing with the county next to you. 
You're not competing with the state next to you. You're competing on a global scale, and you must always remember that when you go out there, that you are competing globally. I expect you to complete those community service projects. You've told us today what you're going to do. We expect you to complete those and then let us know. Parents, I'm going to tell you this. We've mentioned it on Sunday, but to qualify for the scholarships, they must complete those community service projects. So that's added motivation for you to kind of urge them along to complete those community service projects and get the records into us. Well, Lindsay Wilson alone, uh, Dr. Lucky told us this week, today's tuition rates, four years of tuition at Lindsay Wilson College, $96,000. So that's a whole lot of motivation to complete a, a community service project. And we have 16 other uh, partners at colleges and universities that provide some of those same type incentives. How many of you have heard of the SOAR initiative? A few of you? Get involved in SOAR. There's a lot of activity going on. I'm afraid we've lost a little momentum, but we've got to get that momentum back going. There is an annual summit, August 4th, in Pikeville. If you can be there, I'd love to have you there. I'd love to see you there. But get involved in SOAR, because trying to really uh, broaden the scope of what we're doing in East Kentucky, we've lost so many coal jobs, and we've got to replace those coal jobs, or we're not going to keep these best and brightest uh, here after they graduate. So get involved in SOAR, get involved with the Center for Rural Development, and let's make a difference. As I said, Congressman Rogers was not able to be here. He was actually uh, still in session and doing votes in D.C., but he did want to send you a video message, so let's hear Congressman Rogers' comments. Congratulations on your graduation. I now consider each of you as ambassadors for Southern and Eastern Kentucky. I hope you've enjoyed your experience at the Center for Rural Development. Each of you received several letters of recommendation for your selection into this program, and it's evident that there are people who believe in you and see potential for you to make a difference in our region. You must also believe in yourselves. Continue building on what you've learned this week. Further develop your skills in leadership, technology, entrepreneurship, creativity, teamwork, and community service. All of those elements are vital to our future. Even with cutting edge technology and lofty business ideas, we can't move forward and be competitive without the leadership to take us there. You've learned a lot about entrepreneurship during the last few days. When you consider who the most successful people in Kentucky are, you'll find they're often entrepreneurs. Without them, thousands of people wouldn't have jobs today. It's about more than money, though, in your wallet. A true entrepreneur fuels the local economy and impacts thousands of families. Our region is looking to you, our future. This program was developed to invest extra time, education, training into our young people. I want you to grasp the reality of the global competition we face as a nation. You must be determined to challenge yourselves and succeed. As you prepare to finish your high school careers now, you'll be faced with a lot of choices. Choose classes and projects that challenge you. Find community service projects to fill your spare time and Stay informed about the constant changes in technology. Anytime you're viewed as a leader, you must also understand the moral obligation you've got to make, the good choices that you make, and to withstand negative pressures. As an ambassador, you're always welcome to join in some of our youth projects with pride and unite. You can organize your own pride cleanup team, and we'll supply you with the gear that you need or you can organize a pride club or a Unite Club in your school. We also have several youth projects scheduled across the region with Operation Unite, like Camp Unite, or Shoot Hoops, Not Drugs. That's with the former Wildcat uh, star Jeff Shepard. There's a multitude of ways you can be a leader right now at home. I look forward to seeing great things from each of you. Congratulations again. And I wish you all the best.
Several th folks that I need to thank before we move on. Uh, first and foremost, uh, Delaney Stevens, the Youth Programs Director here at the Center for Rural Development, and uh, Delaney has done a, a fabulous job over the last five years leading this program. Scholars, please thank Delaney. The RAs who spent um, basically their, all their days and nights with you over the last six days, Jacob, Jacob Beckley and Breanne Smith, the RAs. Thank those folks. I want to thank all the staff at Lindsay Wilson College, but there's several that I really do want to recognize. Dr. Bill Lucky, Chris Schmidt, Natalie Vickers, LaFon Nettles, Brandon McDowell, and all of those that helped make the week a success. Thank those folks. And I don't know if our interns are still here or not. Uh, Mina and Alora, uh, they got to work with you off and on through the week. Let's thank those as well. At this time, I want to invite Delaney Stevens to the podium and let him lead us through the rest of the graduation. Delaney. Thank you, Lonnie. Parents, family members, welcome to the Center for Rural Development. We're glad to have you back with us. It's been an incredible week, like Lonnie mentioned earlier. Um, this has been a phenomenal class of Rogers Scholars. And you guys, you're a special class. You're the 40th Rogers Scholars class to come through since 1998. Um, and so I've seen some amazing things come out of you this week. You guys really, out of the gate, bonded immediately, I feel like. Um, and I feel like you've had a great experience, too. I know that I've had a great experience watching you all grow, step outside of your comfort zones. Um, and so I'm really happy to share in, in these experiences with you. Uh, parents, they're going to need your support as they move forward and continue to grow as leaders and students and individuals. We've challenged them all week with the notion that they shouldn't be afraid to fail and that they need to think how they can help uh, contribute to their community and their schools and wherever they decide to go long term, uh, they can do great things. But hopefully what we try to encourage them to do is come back to Southern and Eastern Kentucky long term because we need them here. And you guys heard throughout the week from all of the speakers and instructors and even staff with the center, you know, uh, thinking about how you can make an impact and how you can challenge yourself. And so that starts with uh, thinking of others and thinking of how you can uh, really just make a difference every day, no matter who you're dealing with, even if it's yourself. And so I encourage you guys to continue to do that. And community service, it's incredibly important. You all are already involved with community service projects in your schools and communities and churches. And so you need to continue to do that. And especially with the Rogers Scholars Program, you all talked a lot about community service this week. And there's a project that you identified that you'll complete by June 1st of next year. And that's one of the requirements uh, in order to have the scholarships, those 17 scholarship opportunities that are associated with this program. And so the Center for Rural Development, we are here for you every step along the way because you're going to be putting a lot of time and thought and hours into planning these projects and implementing, implementing them. And so we're always here uh, to help you along the way. Uh, parents, we've seen a lot of great things come out of uh, this week, and one of those um, especially is how these students have kind of stepped up to the challenge that we set out for them on Sunday. Um, and we have a program here called uh, Ambassadors, Rogers Scholars Ambassadors. And Lonnie mentioned this briefly a few minutes ago. And ambassadors are really um, kind of the liaison, the link between the center and their class and everything that we do as we continue to implement community service projects and alumni reunions that we do throughout the year and program planning. And so um, each class of Rogers Scholars, they select ambassadors to serve as that, that link between us and the entire class, even though every single one of you are ambassadors now of this program. Um, and so this year's week two Rogers Scholars ambassadors uh, that uh, they voted on among their peers, Mr. Matthew Tackett and Ms. Peyton Riggins. They're going to come up and share their experience from the week and talk about everything that they've done. Please help me welcome Matt and Peyton.
My name is Peyton Riggins and I'm from Russell County. And my name is Matt Tackett and I'm from Floyd County. Uh, <clears throat> let's just jump right into it. Uh, Sunday afternoon after the parents left us, uh, Kara Mattingly from Asbury University came and did some get to know you activities with us. Um, the first game we played was to learn each other's names. Then we played a game that focused on team building and giving and receiving commands. Uh, another game was mainly about focusing and listening. Uh, and then there was another about how actions speak louder than words. After we finished up with Ms. Mattingly, we went back to the student union building and got to hang out and just get to know more about each other. We played cards, ping pong, air hockey, pool, foosball, and we didn't have any music, so one of our um, friends, Ben, he put on a concert for us <laughs> and continued to sing the rest of the week. Um, on Monday, we traveled to Asbury University um, to their challenge course, and we started with more group games and just got to know each other more. And after that, we split into three groups and went to the low ropes course. Um, each group completed three different activities in team with team building challenges. And um, one of my um, experiences were, um, there were three different islands and we had to get from the first island to the third island. Um, but we had two boards and the boards or us, we couldn't touch the ground. And if we did, then we had consequences for those. So we learned from that, that every decision we made comes with consequences, whether they are good or bad. Uh, an activity that my group did was a blindfolded walk through the forest. Um, at first it was just uh, one person who could see to one person who was blindfolded, but then it eventually got to one person who could see to three people who were blindfolded. Um, and I enjoyed it because it focused on the importance of communication and trusting one another. Um, most of the low rope ap activities were to prepare us for the high rope activities. Monday afternoon, we began the high ropes, and that was the most challenging part of the day, because uh, <clears throat> it challenged us to go beyond what we thought we could do. I remember thinking the whole day that I wasn't going to do it, and then my friend Sydney uh, convinced me to do it, and I pushed myself out of my comfort zone, and I had a lot of fun. Um, there were two paths that you could take. One led to a zip swing and the other led to a zip line. And the obstacles on the course varied as which one you wanted to go through. Um, then after we were all finished with the high ups course, we gathered as a group and discussed um, what we learned on the high ups course and how it could be used in real life with such things as teamwork, trust, and communication. And then another big thing we took home that day was a lot of bug bites. <clears throat> when we got back to Lindsay Wilson, we ate dinner, and then we went to the rec center where we swam and played basketball and volleyball. On Tuesday morning, Dr. Hackbert and his entrepreneurship for the public Entrepreneurship for the Public Good program um, from Berea College came to do a entrepreneurship workshop with us. He taught us about his business model canvas and how he uses that to solve problems in our region. And we also did some critical thinking activities. Um, an example of that was he told us we had to get in order based on our birthdays, although we could not talk. So we had to figure out how to communicate without talking. Um, after that, the president of Lindsey Wilson College, Dr. Lucky, came to speak with us about his journey to becoming the president and what his life consists of. Um, one big takeaway from his talk was to dream big because he never imagined he would be the president of Lindsey Wilson College, but his experiences through life led him there. That afternoon, we got to talk to a representative from KHEAA about keys money and college, which led us into our college fair 
where we got into small groups and traveled to 17 different stations where um, colleges such as EKU, WKU, Georgetown, University, University of the Cumberlands, and many more. Um, they talked to us about their college, campus life, and different scholarships that they offered. Tuesday evening was our etiquette dinner at Dr. and Mrs. Lucky's house. Uh, Miss Sue Stivers has taught the etiquette dinner for the Rogers Scholar Program for the past 20 years. An important thing that she said was, you don't have to be from a big place to do big things. Um, she taught us how to sit properly at a table, uh, how to use certain silverware, um, how to carry on polite dinner conversation and to have manners at the table. At first it was intimidating because we were all kind of scared that we didn't want to do anything wrong. But as the night progressed, it got more fun and the food was like really good. <laughs> um, after that, we began our ballroom dancing lesson, which a lot of us were not looking forward to. Um, thanks to Mr. Escobar, he taught us two different dances, the box and the hustle. Um, most of us weren't good at it at first, but as the night progressed, we did get better and we all ended up having a lot of fun. Uh, Wednesday morning, Natalie Vickis, Director of Civic Engagement at Lindsay Wilson College, came and talked to us about the Bonner Scholar Program which is a scholarship that also lets you do a lot of community service when you're in college. Uh, we discussed US and global issues and their solutions. Uh, some of the problems we talked about were gender issues, poverty, drug abuse, and uh, a deficiency in education. Then we went over to the library and had a video conference with Ms. Danielle Smoot, who works with the Congressional Award. The Congressional Award is based off four things, which are community service, physical fitness, uh, exploration, and uh, personal development. <clears throat> and then after that, Dr. Carter, president of Cam uh, Campbellsville University, came and told us his story and how his witnessing of the Marshall plane crash changed him as a person and made uh, him who he is today. That afternoon, we had our first sessions in our majors, and then we went on to do some community service in Adair County. We worked with the local community garden and joined ministries. Um, and at joined ministries, we sorted clothes and made blankets. For, the char for charity and homeless people. And at the community garden, we planted peppers and tomatoes, picked beans, cut grass, basically anything Dr. Vasella wanted us to do to help out. Thursday morning, we were back to working with our majors. Then we went to a presentation by Matt Daly, who is a special assistant to the Secretary of State, Allison Grimes and his speech was how he got involved in politics and how we could get involved and more about civic engagement. Then we had a video conference with Tracy Prater from NASA's Marshall Space and Flight Center in Alabama, and she talked to us about how she got to NASA and some of the new programs that NASA is working on. Uh, then we went back to our majors, and then that night we had a cookout, and we played volleyball, frisbee, and football, and then we went back to the rec center and swam. And this morning, as we traveled to the center, um, Mr. Lawson talked with us about community service, and then we got up and talked about our community service that we've done in the past, and we introduced our service ideas that we plan to carry out as we go back home. Um, also, Kenny Davis, the captain of the 1972 Olympic basketball team, came to speak with us about his story of how the basketball team chose not to accept the silver medal and the hostage crisis. He um, explained to us how that those experiences led him to be a more optimistic person and how that it's the little things in life that are the most important. 
And be, on behalf of the Rogers Scholars, we would just like to thank Senator Hal Rogers, Dr. Lucky, Jacob and Brianne, Mr. Stevens and Mr. Lawson, staff at the center and Lindsey Wilson College for not only the opportunity of being Rogers Scholars, but for the experience of a lifetime. Thank you. Thank you. Great job, guys. I know you all will serve as great ambassadors for your class, and uh, you're part of over 25 ambassadors now. We started this program in 2006, and so uh, we'll continue to keep you engaged and uh, moving the program forward. In addition to everything that Matt uh, talked about, um, excuse me, Matt and Peyton, uh, scholars also spend a significant amount of time in majors, and we've done majors ever since the program started. Some of them have stayed around for a lot longer than others. We try to continue to tweak them uh, to try to get you all to think about the career options out there, not just regular jobs, but what kind of specialty careers that you uh, can go into, especially in southern and eastern Kentucky. And so uh, one of the uh, majors that we've always had is engineering. We've had a great partnership with University of Kentucky. Uh, Dr. Bruce Walcott has taught this major. This was his 40th class of Rogers Scholars, so he's taught this major ever since we started the program. He does a great job. Uh, in addition to engineering, we have a healthcare major, and so we started this major about 10 years ago as well to try to get in tune with some of the in-demand in uh, career fields out there. And so there's a lot of opportunity wherever you go with healthcare, but I know a lot of you are interested in that, and so healthcare has been a great major for us. We could not do this major without Lake Cumberland Regional Hospital here in Somerset. Scholars had the opportunity to come over here a couple of times and work with hospital staff and go into operating rooms, and they'll talk about that. But uh, in addition to Lake Cumberland Regional Hospital, we work with Southern Kentucky Area Health Education Center. They provide a lot of supplies uh, that these scholars work with at the hospital. And then also Lindsey Wilson College Division of Nursing. Ever since we've been at Lindsey Wilson in 2013 is when we moved the program over there. They've done a phenomenal job of uh, picking up the last portion of the healthcare major and Miss Kelly Mann, uh, in particular, she was a former Rogers Scholar in 2005, and she leads that. So it's kind of uh, kind of cool to see full circle, you know, these Rogers Scholars. They have the ability to do great things, and then we see alumni come uh, come back and become engaged with the program again. And so the healthcare major has been great. And then a new major this year was information technology, technology careers. And we used to have this major whenever the program first started. We kind of tweaked it a little bit. It uh, became more of a video production major. And then we've brought it back into how you all can make an impact with technology. And especially with all the different things going on out there, the broadband project that's going on right now that the center is leading uh, in partnership with the Commonwealth of Kentucky. It's a statewide broadband, high speed, high capacity. Uh, internet project, and so the number one priority for the center is Eastern Kentucky, Southern and Eastern Kentucky, and so this technology careers major was a way to try to get you to think about how you can make an impact with technology at your fingertips in our region, um, and so I think we have a, a lot of great opportunities with that major, and we'll see where that goes, but the first major that's going to come up and talk about their experience is the engineering major. Please help me welcome them to the stage. I'm Matt Tackett from Floyd County. I'm Nicole Lee from Letcher County. I'm Colton Morrow from Wayne County. I'm Arbella Caldwell from Adair County. Caleb Honeycutt from Plassey County. Noah Jones from McCreary County. Um, Peyton Riggins from Russell County. Wyatt Lucas from Lee County. I'm Owen Minner from Owsley County. I'm Bailey Willis from Cumberland County. Dr. and Mrs. Walcott. Dr. Walcott works at the University of Kentucky as an electrical engineer. He graduated from uh, Purdue University. He has taught every engineering class for all 20 years of the Rogers, Rogers Scholar program. There are several different types of engineering. 
electrical, ag and biochemical, mechanical, material, mining, and chemical engineering. Electrical engineering is a field of engineering that deals with the study of the ap application of electricity, electronics, and electromagnetism. Ag and biochemical is a field that involves food, feed, fiber, fuels, machinery, buildings, and planning. Mechanical is a branch of engineering dealing with the design, construction, and use of machines. Material is the study of materials in an atomic level. They use materials to solve problems. Mining engineering applies science and technology to the extraction of materials from the earth. Chemical applies science, math, and economics to produce, transform, transport, and properly use chemicals, materials, and energy. Some examples is ag and biochemical, they invented pesticides. Mechanical created cars and trains. Material made plastic. Mining uh, had crude oil. Chemical, food production and natural gas and electrical come up with batteries, lights, and doorbells. After he introduced us to all the different kinds of engineering, Dr. Walcott took us outside to do some team building activities. Before he did, he stressed over and over that teamwork is important in not only engineering, but any other career that you may go into. So when we got out there, he divided us into two groups and we did two different activities. One group, we made a circle by holding hands and we used a hula hoop and the goal was to move the hula hoop in one circle as efficiently and quickly as possible. And the second activity was we held, four people in a group held one string to attach to a tennis ball, and the goal was to move it from one peg to another peg without dropping the ball or knocking over one of the pegs. And after we completed these activities, we learned that Dr. Walcott was right. We used teamwork to do all those activities. And we did learn that teamwork is useful in life, your careers, and your future. All right, so what we did after the team building exercises is we went back up to the classroom and we tried to make an alum aluminum foil boat. The challenge was to see how many pennies we could fit inside the boat without it sinking to the bottom. So we tried the, the first time and we just, it was a trial and error. And there was five teams and none of us really got that far. It, we didn't get that many pennies in the boat. So then he, Dr. Walcott pulls us aside and he talks to us a little bit about calculus. And he tells us the best dimensions to build the boat and gives us the best estimate of how many pennies are supposed to fit in the boat which was 31. And he also gave us some variables that could affect how many pennies could be in the boat, like maybe there's grime on the pennies or maybe they're older so they're heavier. So once he told us the dimensions, we went back and we fixed the boats and we tried again. This time, every team did a lot better. We even went over the expected amount and one team got 32 when they were only predicted to get 31. The last activity we did that day was um, Shark Tank. Um, we were paired into groups of two and then had to come up with common issues we faced and then we had to evaluate each of those and come up with solutions. So we picked the best product we could come up with and went on to make a prototype with a 3D pen. And after we were finished making that product, we then had to pitch it to Mrs. Walcott. On the second day of our engineering major, we learned the concept of reverse engineering. This is where you take a contraption and break it down to its most simplistic pieces. We examine how they fit together to get a better understanding of how they work as a whole. Dr. Walcott allowed us to practice this process by disassembling Lego robots, stripping them down to their most uh, basic components, and using an instruction manual to rebuild them in working condition. After we reassembled the robots, we had to program them to carry out the tasks that we wanted them to perform. At first, 
uh, we started with simple tasks, uh, such as moving the robot a foot forward, and then we moved it three, fo three foot forward, and then we moved it three foot forward with a 90 degree turn, and then eventually we had to make the robot go uh, in a three foot by three foot square around a table without hitting the table, as uh, all the while Dr. Walcott was assuring us that we didn't want to make a $385 mistake in crashing the robot. Um, <laughs> All the uh, hands-on activities that Dr. Walcott had for us were really enjoyable, and as for the week, it was once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. On the second day after we returned from lunch, we came back and we were still working with the robots, but not exactly. There we go. We created an electromagnetic motor, of course, a small version. We used a D-cell battery, a rubber band, two magnets, um, two paper clips, and copper wire that was coated in enamel. And with these very basic materials, we created a type of motor, and this is what it looks like. And the magnets actually made and produced current with the battery that was able to make the copper wire spin. Um, and although, you know, quite elementary, it is a really good lesson on for us to learn how things work. So if we do end up pursuing this career, we will be able, we will be able to efficiently and effectively produce things. Okay. Um, <clears throat> after that, we did the Faraday flashlight. And... Uh, uh, it was like a flashlight thing that had a it had a magnet and also had a copper wiring, and uh, when you shake it, the magnet is supposed to go through the wiring, and that creates the power. And then the amount of the loops uh, determines uh, how much power that is produced. And what we had to do is we had to put a, we had to connect alligator clips on both sides of the wirings, and we also had. Uh, clipped alligator clips to the LED lot, and then when we shake it, it lights up the LED. On the second day, we did many activities, one of those being a tower building exercise. We were given the task of creating the highest tower we could with a box of connects, which are similar to Legos. It really challenged our way of problem solving by forcing us to figure out new ways to make our towers taller and with supportive structures. This showed us that with any job, you need to create new solutions to certain problems, and teamwork is viable in producing those solutions. To finish up the engineering major, we got to use the 3D pins again. Uh, Dr. and Mrs. Walcott usually make medals for the students uh, with UK's 3D printer, but it takes too long and they want us to make them now. And that's because now they're unique and it shows off our creativity. So this is all of us with the medals we made. Um, and this concludes the presentation of the engineering major. We would like to thank Dr. and Mrs. Walcott and UK for coming and teaching us. Thank you all. Great job, guys. As I mentioned, the engineering major has been incredible. Dr. Walcott does a great job, and um, we need more engineers in our region, and so hopefully you guys will continue to think about pursuing engineering as a career option. There's so many different um, opportunities out there, and so you just need to think about what you can do, again, to make an impact. Uh, the next major that's gonna come up is healthcare, and healthcare has had a very challenging week just because everybody wanted health care, but then whenever they found out they had to wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning to get over to Somerset, they weren't as happy about it. But I think they still enjoyed it. Uh, this is a terrific major, and I'm going to invite them to come up and share their experience. Hi, my name is Eden Sloan, and I'm from Knott County. 
My name is Lincoln Rose and I'm from Lawrence County. My name is Taylor Alderman and I'm from Bath County. My name is Emily Noble and I'm from Breathitt County. My name is Rachel Dillon and I'm from Boyd County. My name is Cassie Strong and I'm from Monroe County. My name is Hannah Daniels and I'm from Perry County. I'm Jana Foles and I'm from Vail County. My name is Miles Merle and I'm from Taylor County. My name is Calder Osset and I'm from Floyd County. And this is all the 10 people in the medical majors. Throughout this week, we have learned so much about health care and hospital systems through especially Susan Williams, but also the entirety of the staff at Lake Cumberland Regional Hospital. We had the pleasure of visiting their hospital twice this week, once on Wednesday afternoon from, for about four hours, and once, as Delaney said, on Thursday morning at 6 a.m. And uh, I think I speak for all of us whenever I say that I love this week and that I was enlightened by all the activities and experiences that we had this week. Our first stop on our trip was to use the ultrasound. They had a volunteer go up and use the, have the machine used on them, which is that handsome guy right there. Um, to use the machine, they had to apply a gel because the ultrasound waves does not travel well through the air. While looking, they were surprised to find that I actually had a working heart with valves, arteries, and veins. But even more unexplainable, they found out that my ever so enlarging stomach was not a baby, but was in fact the good working staff at the Lindsay Wilson College Kitchen. Um, yesterday we worked with the Lindsay Wilson nursing educator, Miss Mann. We learned basic nursing skills like taking each other's pulse, heart rates, and checking temperatures. At the end of the day, we tested our knowledge and wrote songs about nursing skills we learned so we had fun and won't forget the skills we made. We visited the therapy center at Lake Cumberland Regional Hospital and an occupational therapist talked to us about what types of activities they carry out to help patients gain more independence. It was really inspiring to see how different types of therapists, such as OTs, develop relationships with patients and help them to gain strength and independence. On our second day at the hospital, each member of the healthcare major got to get a full-on experience of what it feels like to be a nurse. Masks, shoe covers, scrub caps, and a full set of scrubs. Lake Cumberland Regional Hospital even gave us true hospital name tags. An OR nurse then taught us the importance of each and every piece of, and what could happen if we did not wear each of them. After we changed into our scrubs, we got to tour the operating rooms. We got to see the surgery board that had all the surgeries for the day and go into operating rooms. Also, they showed us everything needed for a surgery and how particular ORs are for certain surgeries. We got to peek into a neurosurgery and a pacemaker implant. We were already really surprised about how they thoroughly cleaned everything, and the OR was a very interesting experience. Okay. Also on the first day when we visited the hospital, we were honored that the chief of surgery shared his life story with us and gave us the opportunity to learn the basics of suturing on foam blocks. Even though we had a difficult start, by the end of the hour, we felt like we belonged on an episode of Grey's Anatomy. We visited the hospital blood bank and blood drive to see the immense process of how a patient receives healthy blood during pre-op, surgery, and post-op. The blood comes from the patient, is spun in a machine to separate red blood cells and plasma, and gets tested for bacteria and diseases. Then it is prepared and kept in a temperature between one and eight degrees Fahrenheit for the patient's surgery. Another thing we experienced was being able to talk to an ER doctor, and we got to go outside to see the hospital's helicopter. While talking to the ER doctor, we heard about multiple hectic experiences, experiences that he's had 
throughout the past. And he also mentioned about how working in the ER has allowed himself to fully appreciate life, his life. And then after that, we walked outside to see the helicopter, which is used to receive patients that normally an ambulance couldn't reach and to transfer patients to far off hospitals. Also, they mentioned that most hospital helicopter pilots are actually retired military pilots. In conclusion, the world of healthcare is vast and it's exciting and it's ever changing. We explored everything from being a cardiothoracic surgeon to working in hospital management. Even if we don't decide to have some sort of career in healthcare, we now know that with hard work and education, we can achieve more than we ever thought possible. Thank you very much. Great job. And the last major that I want to invite up is technology careers. As I said, this is a new major for us. We're trying to figure out ways to engage you guys. I know you're already engaged with technology, but how can we engage you with job creating opportunities, especially in our region? And so we partnered up with Interact. They're a firm out of Louisville, Kentucky. They're doing a lot of work in Eastern Kentucky, retraining coal miners uh, to learn computer programming and coding. And so we're really excited about the opportunities that uh, this major brings. And uh, you guys are gonna come up and share your, your experience. I'm Jacob Triplett, and I'm from Floyd County. My name is Christopher Brown, and I'm from Harlan County. I'm Mariana Meadows, and I'm from McCreary County. I'm Sydney King, and I'm from Laurel County. I'm Madison Simpson, and I'm from Leslie County. I'm Isabel Moons, and I'm from Clinton County. I'm Ben Moulton, and I'm from Perry County. I'm Molly Lewis, and I'm from Elliott County. I'm Taylor Wesley, and I'm from Lincoln County. My name is Rex Lacefield, and I'm from Knox County. I'm Good evening, I'm Michelle Matthews and I'm from Round County and um, behind me is a wonderful group of young scholars. Um, we got to work together this week exploring the technology major with um, a representative from Interapt, uh, Mr. Steve Fowler, and I'm going to let them talk to you more about that in depth. <laughs> okay, so our instructor for the technology major was Mr. Steve Fowler. Uh, he works for a company called Interapt in Louisville that creates apps for other companies to make it easier for consumers to use their products. So they created apps for companies such as GE, Humana, Trilogy, and even created HIPAA compliant apps for Kentucky hospitals. And an important part about this major is we didn't only learn about technology itself, but also the entrepreneurial aspect of technology. We learned how you could use technology to make business more efficient, as well as the importance of business innovation. We learned about new, new and developing technology, like wearables such as Google Glass and Oculus Virtual Reality, and how they're being used in modern companies. Google Glass is created by Google and allows people to video what they are doing, as well as take pictures. You wear Google Glass just like normal glasses, only the top is even with your eyebrows. It, it projects a screen above your right eye. This allows companies to train people because the employee can video their trainer before they try to do it themselves. Then, as the employee works, they can watch the video to make sure everything is done correctly. So over the past two days, we talked about two different realities, and one of those being augmented reality, which is like the Google Glasses, um, and that is a technology that superimposes a computer-generated image on a user's view of the real world, thus providing a composite view. The second reality we learned about is virtual reality, which you'll hear about in a minute but it is a computer-generated simulation of a three-dimensional image that can be interacted with in a seemingly real or physical way. Many businesses are starting to use the technology of virtual reality 
to train employees for situations that would be too dangerous to have them be trained in uh, in real life. Uh, and also, filmmakers are starting to use the virtual reality technology uh, to uh, make movies with the use of the 360 degree camera. Plus, uh, the military is even using it uh, to train the next generation of soldiers. In our information technology class, we got the opportunity to create an app and pitch the idea to Mr. Fowler. The app we created is called BeautyBot. BeautyBot is a worldwide app that was essentially made to help individuals 12 and up to get inspired from others as well as inspiring others. This app is based around makeup, hair, nails, and fashion. Our slogan for the app is, It's a bed of beauty bot. Mm. When you click on our beauty bot app, it takes you to the home screen, which is always filtering through the most popular pictures. At the top of the screen, there are three icons, which include the search bar, where you can search for other users, the drop-down bar, which includes makeup, nails, hair, and fashion, and your profile picture. Once you click on your profile picture, it takes you to your personal page. On your page, you have three columns, which include your posts, your favorite posts, and your favorite users. On your profile page, we have a banner that displays a coupon code for our sponsors, which include Mary Kay, Avon, and Bare Minerals. When you click on the picture or video that displays, where, that displays their product, it takes you straight to their website. While on their website, you can use our coupon code to get money off. We receive 10% off the profit our sponsors make, therefore helping us with our revenue. We plan to advertise our app by using Facebook banners, ads on Snapchat between posts, and video ads on YouTube. Our app is free, but users can pay a 99 cent fee for a premium version. Mr. Fowler informed us the way you make an app successful is by giving back. We plan to donate 10% of our commissions at the end of each year to women's shelters, which provide them with items they need but can't afford. So we also had two other um, app design teams. The first app design team created an app for child education for ages three to nine. The purpose of this app was to help children get a step ahead before school and also help them throughout elementary school. The second group was the Kentucky His History app. The purpose of this app was to educate residents of the state of Kentucky and even the United States about the rich history of our state. In conclusion, within our technology major class, we learned many different things. Top of all is that teamwork and creativity is key in all endeavors as shown by our app making and the origins of Interapt, Mr. Foley's company. Second, we learned the importance of technological development within the workplace and in our day-to-day -day lives. This became evident when Mr. Foley permitted us to try out the AR-driven Google Glass and the VR-driven Oculus to show how technology such as these can be used for good. But despite enduring tense competition on Thursday with one another while designing our apps, most importantly, we learned how to work best as a team. And really, isn't that what this was meant to be all about? We would like to thank Mr. Foley and the Interapp team for taking time out of their busy schedule to come and speak with us this week. Thank you. Another great presentation. Let's give a hand for all three of these groups. I think the main takeaway from the majors and the entire week really though is that you guys can do anything. I mean, it just takes a little bit of motivation. It takes some creativity and innovation. And again, that don't be afraid to fail. And so I hope that you guys remember that as you move forward no matter what you do um, and you all can accomplish great things. At this time, I want to invite Lonnie back up to the stage, as well as Jacob, and we're going to present the Doug Reese Memorial Award. Thank you, Delani. 
Douglas Reese was well known throughout southern and eastern Kentucky as a prominent attorney and civic leader. Doug was born in Cincinnati, Ohio, son of Albert and Opal Montgomery Reese in 1942. Doug's family moved to Jackson County, Kentucky when he was a child. Doug passed away suddenly on January 4, 2006. Doug had one daughter, Amy, and one son, Adrian, deceased, as well as one brother, Gary Reese. Doug earned his bachelor's degree at Eastern Kentucky University in 1964 after graduation from Tyner High School in his native Jackson County. He earned his law degree from the University of Louisville Brandy School of Law in 1971, where he was a member of Phi Alpha Delta Legal Fraternity. He was admitted to the bar of the U.S. District Courts for the Eastern and Western Districts of Kentucky, the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Sixth, Cur Sixth Circuit, and the U.S. Supreme Court. He served on the Board of Directors for the Center for Rural Development from 1995 through 2005 and was Board Chairman from 1994 until his death. He was named to the Executive Board of the Kentucky Native American Arts and Crafts Center at General Butler State Park in 2003. Reese was also a board member of the Sanders Brown Center for Aging at the University of Kentucky from 1992 to 1998. Appointed by the governor to the Kentucky Appalachian Task Force, the Regional Crime Commission from 1972 to 1974, and the Kentucky Appalachian Commission from 1996 to 2004. He also served as a board member of the Kentucky Opry, Mountain Arts Center, the Board of Overseers of the University of Louisville, and the Board of Trustees at UofL the East Kentucky Corporation, and in 1990 was named vice chairman of that entity, and in 1991, its chairman. He was member of the fundraising committee of the Cooperative Community Care, a former member of Natural Resources and Environmental Law Section of the American Bar Association. The Doug Reese Memorial Award is given to the Rogers Scholars who scored the highest on their application. The recipient receives a $250 scholarship to any in-state institution of his or her choice, and they also receive a mountain dulcimer. It is my honor and privilege to award the Rogers Scholars Week 2 Doug Reese Memorial Award to Ms. Peyton Riggins. Congratulations, Peyton. At this time, Brianne's going to come up and we're going to present certificates to these scholars. Taylin Alderman. <clears throat> Christopher Brown. Arabella Caldwell. <clears throat> Hannah Daniels.
Cole Durosset. Rachel Dillon. Gina Foltz. <clears throat> Caleb Honeycutt. Noah Jones. Sydney King. Rex Lacefield. <clears throat> Nicole Lee. Molly Lewis. Wyatt Lucas. Mache Matthews. Mariana Meadows. Benjamin Melton. Matthew Minter. Isabel Moons. Colton Morrow.
Miles Morrell. Emily Noble. Peyton Riggins. Lincoln Rose. Madison Simpson. Eden Sloan. Cassie Strong. Matt Tackett. Jacob Triplett. Taylor Wesley. And Bailey Willis. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2017 Week 2 Rogers Scholars, give them a huge round of applause. So Laura and staff are going to get them situated on these risers, and we're going to do a group photo so you can take all those photos in just a minute. Before we, you can go ahead and start that, Laura, but I'm going to thank some folks while we're doing that. First and foremost, Congressman Rogers. He is our visionary leader. He's our inspiration. And without him, this program absolutely would not be possible. Please thank Congressman Rogers, if you would. <clears throat> I want to thank the Center for Rural Development Board of Directors that allow me to dream, that allow me to keep these programs going like the Rogers Scholars, like the Rogers Explorers, like the Entrepreneurial Leadership Institute and always supporting uh, the direction that we're taking the program. Please thank the Center's Board of Directors. 
And then I have a long list here that we'll go through and uh, we'll tr try to get them all at the end, okay? Dr. Peter Hackbert in Berea College, University of Kentucky College of Engineering that has provided instructors for this engineering program uh, from the very beginning, as you heard. Lindsey Wilson College, Dr. Bill Lucky and his entire staff, Interapps Technologies and Ankur Gopal and Steve Fowler, South Kentucky Rural Electric Cooperative, who has raised over $200,000 uh, holding golf tournaments for this program every year over the last 14 years. Mr. Milton Huffaker, Lake Cumberland Regional Hospital. Uh, and then I want to make sure that we get Delaney and the RAs. They have done a fabulous job. Please thank those folks. And then I'm going to try to hit as many of the center staff as I can without, with the risk of missing someone. I hope I do not. Sharon Hickman, Amy Ellis, Shannon Carter, Jonathan Foster, Sharon Dodson, Kevin Pierce, Wes Brown, Laura Glover, Allison Cross, Deborah Hines, Mackenzie Luke, Gretchen Wheeler, Ina Cross, Patty Simpson, and if I missed anyone, I'm so, so sorry, all of the center staff. Please thank the center staff. <clears throat> I want to thank all of our speakers for the week. They all do this. Uh, we, we don't pay them the majority of the speakers that we have in this program, and they do it because they love this program. So I want to thank all of our speakers. And last but certainly not least, parents, again, thank you for sharing your sons and daughters with us this week. We appreciate you so, so very much. And as I said, uh, you can come up and take photos. Ladies and gentlemen, 2017, week two, Rogers Scholars, Safe travels, Godspeed. <laughs>